This is another question that falls under radian measure. Let's have a look at it together. A wedge is cut so that its cross-sectional area is a sector of a circle. So that sector that they're talking about, that cross-sectional area is this guy in here. That's the sector that they're referring to. Let's keep going. Uh, a radius 15 centimeters, so you can see that that has been drawn in on the diagram for us, and it's subtending an angle of pi on six. Let's just draw that in, pi on six there at the center, find uh, part A, the volume, part B, the surface. All right, so how do we um, think about this? Well, to start with, when we think about this wedge, it's a weird kind of shape. We don't deal with wedges very frequently. Um, this wedge is part of a bigger shape. What is that bigger shape that this wedge was cut out of? Well, if you want to think about it this way, um, <laughs> I think about pizzas and I also think about cakes. Can you tell I'm hungry? Um, this shape here kind of looks like a slice of cake, right? And a cake, of course, to begin with, traditionally, is going to be cylindrical. So this shape has been cut out of a cylinder. If you want to think about it this way, Let's try and do um, a, that's going to be my ellipse there. And if you want to think about a cake like so, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out of, you know, this chunk in here. Um, when I take this guy out, that's going to, you know, remove it and then put it on its side. That gives us the wedge that we're interested in. So when I want to work out the volume of this wedge, I'm going to start with the volume of the shape that it comes from, the cylinder, and then I'm going to work out what proportion of that cylinder is relevant. So let's have a think about that. Um, I might as well use this diagram of a cake to help me because I can take the information that's been provided and sort of put it onto this cylinder. So what I would do is make it a little bit bigger. Now, when you have a think for starters, uh, this radius 15 centimeters that comes uh, off of this wedge, right? That radius of 15 centimeters is really referring to the radius of the cylinder that the wedge came from. So in fact, I can write that as 15 centimeters right there. Terribly not to scale, but that's okay because I then need to work out, you know, the volume of a cylinder, if you can't recall, is pi r squared h, very much like the, uh, well, identical to the volume formula for any other um, shape that has this consistent cross section. We would normally call them prisms, but of course prisms have to all have straight edges. I digress, I've got my radius r, I need my height. So that's, that's this thing in here, right? Now when you have a look at my diagram, um, the original one I should say, um, which of these numbers is going to be the height? Um, you could get pretty lucky and notice that there is only one other number that is relevant to a length, and that is of course this six over here. And you can kind of see, right, when you have taken this slice out, where did this, it's now lying on its edge, but where did this come from? And that is the, the height of the cake. So this is gonna be six centimeters over here. Now the volume of the cylinder um, doesn't use this angle in here because um, the whole cylinder is just, um, you know, a complete rev revolution. But I can quickly work out what it is using these two numbers, right? Pi times that radius of 15 squared multiplied by the height. So that's 225 times six. I do not know what my um, 225 times tables are. And I certainly don't know my six times tables that far. So what I do is I'll just leave that for a moment and then see if um, me and the other part of the question can help me out here. Now, you can see the other part of the question is this angle that the wedge uh, forms as part of the entire cylinder. Now because the angle here is pi on 6, I can work out, you know, the total cylinder is 2 pi. So therefore the proportion of the cake, sorry, cylinder, the proportion of the cylinder that this wedge comes from is going to be pi on 6 divided by 2 pi. That's the, you know, the little section divided by the whole section. So if you have a think about this, uh, our pi's sadly are going to cancel. And that leaves me with um, 1 over 6 divided by 2, which is 1 over 12. So therefore, I can go over and say if this is, I should have labeled this actually as the volume of my cylinder, because that's what it is. Volume of cylinder is this. Therefore, the volume of the wedge is going to be one twelfth of the volume of that cylinder. So it's going to be, well, I'll write down a twelfth, one over twelve times, and then we'll borrow this, right? So 
you can see here, this actually is a little bit helpful to me because um, some stuff is gonna cancel, right? I'm going to have, what, was, what color was I using before? That 12, I can take out a factor of six, which cancels over here, leaves me with two. So now I just have um, 225 pi on two. Doesn't cancel any further. That in what units? Centimeters cubed. That is the volume of my wedge. So I'm done. Let's have a look. That was part A, right? I'll write that part A up there. Let's have a go at part B. What is the surface area of this wedge? Well, um, surface area is tricky because you just gotta make sure you don't miss any of the different parts that make up the surface of it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, take this, I don't think I need this working anymore, so I'm gonna clear this guy out briefly. Um, and then think about all of the different surfaces because I can only see two at the moment. Uh, if you wanna label them, um, I can see that the front one here, this is the front. Um, I also have what I'm gonna call the top but there are other surfaces that are hidden. So um, how do we see them? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw in these extra surfaces so that we can make sure we identify them. So if you take this curve over here and move it over into the back there, and if you also take this edge here and move that guy into the back, I've got one last one, which is this one over here. Now we have a complete picture through the diagram. I might actually put it in a slightly lighter color because it's distracting me. I think you can still see that. Um, now we can see we don't just have the front and the top. We also have what I'm going to call, um, oops, I'm still stuck in this mode. Let's fix that. Um, you've also got the bottom and the back from this angle. And then lastly, uh, I guess because I'm starting to run out of names, I'm going to call this part the curved surface area, right? Every other surface area is made up of, well, it looks to me like um, sectors and rectangles. So all of those are, are plane surfaces. So what I want to do is go through each one, one at a time and see if I can work out what they're equal to. Now, the first thing I notice is that um, you've got some duplication, right? So the front and the back are the same. So if I can work out the area of the front and the back, um, sorry, if I can just work out the area of the front, that will tell me the area of the back. That's not the only duplication I have. Even though they're off at different angles, if you think about cutting that cake again, right, like so, each of the cross sections that you have, um, you know, from that vertical angle, they're all the same as well. So therefore the top and the bottom are also the same. The only area that is unique that doesn't have another copy of it is this curved area over here. So let's just start going through. Um, I'll do them in order of ease. So so the top and the bottom are both rectangles. So I'm going to go area of um, top is going to be um, the same as the area of the bottom, which as you can see here is 15, that's the width, uh, multiplied by 6, that's the, the depth or the length or whatever you call them, right? So uh, 6 times 15, that's going to give me 90. So, or I should say 90 square centimeters. So I will file that away for later. Um, once I've got the top, I've got the bottom, let's do the front. So the area of the front is gonna be now, like we said, this is a sector. So I'm gonna need my sector area formula, which is half r squared theta. Thankfully, I have my r squared, my r, and my theta already given to me in the question. So this is gonna be a half uh, multiplied by, uh, let's see here, so my r squared, that's 15 squared, this seems familiar, doesn't it? And then my theta is gonna be that pi on six. So what am I getting here? Um, I'm going to say that's, well, I'm just gonna evaluate it like so, 225 pi on 12. And because I'm being exceptionally lazy today and using my calculator a whole lot, let's go ahead and work out what 225 on 12 will be. 75 over four, because of course there's only a factor of three, <clears throat> excuse me, that can cancel. So 75 pi on four square centimeters. All right, so I have my top area, which is the same as the bottom. I've got my front area, which is the same as the back. The last one I need is that curved area. Now this one's a bit sneaky, because you might think, I don't even know how to work out a curved area, right? Well, I want you to come back to this idea of the cylinder. Um, the cylinder, if you have a think about this, 
working out its area, its surface area, I should say, is something we've been doing for a while, right? So you would say, okay, I will do um, the top and the bottom in a similar thought process to how we've been doing it today. And then we do the curved surface area. But the easiest way to think about the curved surface area is that if you take that round part and then just cut it and unwrap it, or if you want to think about it, imagine if you were trying to wrap a cake, you would just take a long cylinder and then just wrap it around into a circular shape. All you need to know is the uh, length all the way around the cylinder, in other words, its circumference, and then that would be the width, um, the very long width of your um, rectangle which would wrap sufficiently around. So therefore, when I think about uh, this section, the curved section in here, what I need to know <clears throat> is number one, uh, what, is, what is this length over here, the height of it, if you, as it were, because it's, I'm thinking about it sideways, which is already given to me, it's six. And then I need to work out what this curved arc is. So that's going to be the length of an arc formula, right? Um, once I take those two bits, even though one is curved, you can imagine it unwrapping it and you actually just get a rectangle like before. So therefore, uh, let's have a think about this. The area of that curved section in there, um, we said it's gonna be a rectangle which already has that height of six, and then I'm gonna multiply by, um, well, what's gonna be our r and our theta, which is our uh, length of an arc formula, right? Well, r is going to be the 15, and then I'm gonna have my theta, which is pi on six. So this here is my r theta. And if you wanna think about it in sort of, you know, a way that's less confusing, cause you can see there's a lot of diagrams sort of overlapping each other. If I just have a look at the uh, cross section, you can see the cross sectional area is a sector of a circle. Let's just draw that sector. And that'll, I hope, convince you. Here's the cross section in here. You've got that 15, which is that long radius. You've got the pi on six in here and that was very messy. And then what we worked out was this r theta, which is the 15 pi on six that we're saying here. Now, conveniently for us, it's almost like they designed the question to do this. You're gonna have some canceling again, this six and this six cancel. So that leaves you with 15 pi. And this is an area after all. So I'm getting square centimeters. We're ready to conclude. So I can say total surface area, total surface area equals. Remember, there's two lots at the top, top and bottom, two lots of the front, front and back, and then there's just one of the curved. So I'm gonna get double of the 90, uh, double of the 75 pi on four, and then I'm just gonna have a single lot of the 15 pi. So let's just tidy that up a little bit. That's gonna be 180. Um, the two and the four are gonna cancel a little bit, giving me 75 pi on two plus 15 pi, that 15 pi is the same as 30 pi on two. So that gives me leaving the uh, 180 separate from the other guy, um, 105 pi on two, if I'm crunching my numbers right on the fly, square centimeters. And let's just have a see, did they want us to um, approximate? They did not, so I'm done. That's the surface area. So there was a lot to that question, mainly because number one, um, surface area questions in general, you've got to like make sure you get every different angle, quite literally. And then number two, to work out that surface area, you have to do a lot of work to infer the different parts and different dimensions that are relevant to those, especially to work out that curved surface area. Yeah, you've got to know where you're coming from. You've got to understand the shapes really well. So hopefully that's helpful to you.